Hello and welcome back. Today we are doing a new episode of 90 Day Fiance The Single Life. This is season four, episode nine. We're gonna get started with John. We're back with John one week after Megan has gone back home. John is feeling uneasy because Megan won't respond to his text. So he's decided to go out with his brother Patrick and Patrick's wife, Thais. It's been a week since Megan's left Vegas and I'm not entirely sure what our relationship status is right now. Patrick asks John how the trip went and John's like, well, it was great till you opened your meathead mouth. Now Megan's upset. It pissed Megan off enough to uh, question our relationship. She hasn't been very responsive, so I've been trying to give her some space. Patrick says, what if she's upset with the truth? What if she's upset with the realization that this won't work? I'm trying to make sure you don't drown. You don't get in over your head. I knew how to swim and, that floor. And I knew how the to person swim that, that you're with actually, you know, knows what you want. Patrick's like, you said you didn't want any responsibility and then you're getting with her. And John just won't admit it. He's like, I said I didn't want any babies. Responsibility, say so you don't want to be a dad. I didn't this want babies. Exactly there's a difference. There's a difference. No, there's not, bro. Yes, there is. He's right. It's not. I would actually argue that infancy is the easiest stage because they spend so much time sleeping. Like right now, Thais is there with their baby and they're all sitting there having this conversation while the baby is just asleep in the car seat. If that was a toddler, they wouldn't be able to have this conversation right now. John's like, I'm gonna make it work, bro. Don't worry about it. Patrick's like, well, you're not gonna make any serious decisions like moving, are you? And John's like, yeah, it's probably gonna happen, bro. I'm probably moving there. It's probably happening, bro. Thais chimes in, how do you know that you're in love with this woman? And John's like, how did you guys know? You just feel it. She's like, we were together for three years before we decided to get married. You've been with Megan for six months. You know, just like Pat wants you, right? My God. It's the same Me thing, though. together like you three are years. together, bro. I understand their concern, but I was married within six months of meeting my husband, and we've been together for 14 years now, so... I mean, when you know, you know. I'm in love with this woman, right? I don't care what you say. And you know, I'm gonna fall my heart. I don't know what that means, but I mean, I hope you really think about it. So he gets back to the house and calls up Megan. He tells us that she tends to overthink things and she's really been overthinking since Patrick said what he said. Megan has a tendency to overthink things because, you know, she was told things that are not true. Um... Which part wasn't true, John? But anyways, she answers the phone and immediately tells him she's been thinking a lot about what Patrick and Thais have said and she's concerned about it. And he's like, well, unless you've changed your mind about me, we need to make the next step by moving to Texas. I'm gonna get the ball rolling and make this happen. Oh my gosh, you guys. I know there's a lot of speculation that he's already married to her and with the preview they show for the next one i do believe that she pressured him into getting married i would hope that you were wanting some kind of commitment as far as like a ring or something i wouldn't want to make another rush decision okay but that's all that we got for them we're moving on to ty ray ty ray's brothers have again insisted that they go out and try to meet some women for ty ray it looks like they head out to a bar where there's dancing. I'm working towards my goals of meeting my first, you know, my first dates, you know, my first kiss, my first real love connection after Carmela. He's still referring to Carmela as Carmela and like they actually had a love connect. <sighs> mm. He kind of tries talking to some girls and then one of them jumps right into conversation with him. She's getting really close to him. She starts dancing with him right away. So he takes her to the balcony and they start asking each other questions. What do you do for work? How old are you? How old am I? 22. Uh, 25. 
Oh, okay. Ah. All right, yeah. He's still- then he's like, hey, do you want to hang out tomorrow? Yeah, hang out tomorrow. Yeah? Or, or Sunday. My that phone. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm free all day. I really like her. It's like straight from the get-go, she just saw good in him. She just liked him for exactly who he was. It's like she saw through all of those nerves. And I really hope it's not for the show because I'm getting excited for him. I feel like we click really nicely when I first saw him. I just want to give him a big hug. Okay, so it's the next day or whatever. Tyre and his broskies meet up with Reyna at a backyard cookout. Tyre is relieved that the drinks are already flowing because he is hella nervous. You know, a sense of her personality, you know, what her goals are, what she's looking for, you know, because I don't know much about her. And then I feel like after that, I can kind of take it to the next step. Reyna seems super chill, very laid back. She's just grooving, enjoying herself. And then Tyree immediately dives in with the tough questions. You like the vibe? The vibe is awesome. You are fly. Should I start looking at apartments out here? Definitely. No. <laughs> Do it. Actually. <laughs> oh, that was so freaking funny, Tyree. This might be the perfect girl for Tyree. Not only does she not seem to mind his plethora of corks, she's actually calmed him down. He has stopped bouncing to listen to her and to think about what she's saying. So she asked about the bees he was wearing and he's like, do you want them? And she's like, you wanna give them to me? And he's like, yeah, but you gotta do something to get it. Yeah. You want to give them to me? Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you got to do something to get them. So she's like, okay, you can kiss me on my cheek. And he's like, oh, all right. Dang it. I wanted the first kiss to, to be fireworks, you know, while we're kissing. I wanted to be into it. I wanted to, to make us connect. <gasps> 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 Are you guys still there? I wanna, I want, I wanna be in love. I wanna feel love. I wanna be around love. What did he say? I think I blacked out from cringing so hard. All right, so they grab some food. They go back to the hotel and they eat with their little piggies just sitting in the pool. She asks him if he likes to cook and they bond over food. It's and I don't want to limit myself to being afraid because I've done that for years, you know. So I'm definitely going to, you know, shoot my shot. <sighs> so he shoots it. He's like, we have real good chemistry. Could you see yourself being in a long distance relationship or is it too soon? Would I be that person you think you could do like long distance or is it just too soon? No, you guys, she tells us that she's not interested. Nah, I liked her. No, I was hoping I would get a, a kiss, like a, a good night kiss, <laughs> a proper kiss, but. Hi, Ray, we get it, dude. You're freaking thirsty. We get it. Just chill. Stop talking about physical connections. You need to slow way down, okay? Try to make an emotional connection first. I think I am ready for a child, but I'm not sure how I can have a baby totally alone. Oh, Lord. Oh, we're moving on to Natalie, guys. Whew. Hold on. We're in the car. This her mommy. She's got the pout going on because they are again talking about children. This narrative is extremely frustrating. The mom just gives Natalie a hard time for everything everything that natalie mentions okay natalie mentions that her first husband and her i'm assuming it's her first husband and her were about to move forward with artificial insemination and her mom's like oh no if there was real love in the relationship the children would just come i feel so bad for her because at this point it is very obvious that Natalie has struggled with her fertility her entire life. She tells us that she wanted to have her first baby when she was 25. So not, <clears throat> so not only is her mom prying her to have children, 
she's now given her crap for doing it artificially. I, I just, I can't. I just, okay, I'm just gonna speed run this because it's so stupid. She gets to the fertility clinic and is immediately emotional. Oh, I'm 38 and uh, I'm sorry. Take your time, I never okay. saw that I will Yeah, yeah, take your time, on. it's okay. You can tell what the doctor is thinking, but he keeps it very pleasant and nice. It's a not uncommon situation, mm -hmm. by the way. Natalie, it's not, so. that's why I'm like, I it's, don't really know. I don't know if I have a lot of time left. The freaking mom, she has to keep interjecting information when she can't even understand what the doctor and Natalie are saying back and forth. And then he can't understand her. Сейчас самое время. Я хочу сказать, что он хочет сказать, что сейчас самое время подумать о будущем. Да, потому что мне 38 лет, потому что до 50 лет женщина может родить. Lady, do you know where you are? How could the donor be a husband? Okay, so then they move on to read about the donors and who she might like. Natalie's like. All of these people sound so wonderful. How will I know? And she's like, how will I find him? How will he know that I had his baby? And the lady's like, um, this is totally anonymous. There will be no contact from the man. He will never find out that his sperm was chosen. Do you, do you understand where you are right now? Anonymous donor which means he is never gonna know you, Natalie, has purchased his sperm to, made a, uh, to make a child, right? Natalie's like, oh my gosh, I can't take this. I cannot have this, you know, things that build connection, then it's kind of awkward. You, you want to make contact with a man you've never met after having his child for why? Natalie. So she walks out of the clinic devastated. She's, she's just shocked with the idea that she would never know who the donor actually is. She had, I guess, planned in her mind that after having the baby, she would make contact with him and they would form some sort of a connection. She's nuts. On the way out, she's like, okay, if I'm gonna have a kid, I need to have the father in my life. And the mom's like, ask Michael. Может быть. Да. Спросите Майкла. Мам. This woman is on another planet. But you guys, in the preview for the next episode, the mom is like, hey, guess what, Natalie? Я сама позвонила Майклу и пригласила его сюда. And then Natalie says she still has feelings for Michael. Okay. A second ago, you just told us that you were still grieving for Josh. I broke up with Josh a few weeks ago, and it's definitely not at the best place after all what's happened. All right, last but not least, we have DB. Debbie and her son Julian are driving, and he's asking about Ruben. And with everything that she says to him, he's got like this negative comeback or some kind of critical response like he's criticizing something you're driving around you're racing around miami going fast in a slingshot no seat belt no helmet it's really annoying but i think it's because he knows his mom better than anyone and he's basically become her polar opposite out of necessity he he questions her decisions because she makes a lot of really bad decisions. Everything that seems too good to be true, I tell her, is, is it is. You know, anyone could take advantage of my mom if they've tried or not. So the two of them meet up with Ruben. This date looks really fun. Um, they're just given spray cans and they go and spray paint whatever they want to do on a dedicated space for the artist. I thought it looked really fun. But Julian is not very happy. He's like, do we have permission from the homeowners to graffiti this wall? Then he's like, hey, hey, Marco Polo, what do you like about my mom? And I was surprised with his answer, but I have to give Ruben credit for being honest. He's like, oh yeah, I love blondes. I've always dated blondes. <laughs> and Julian's like, well, dad gum, you ever been in any trouble with the law? And Ruben's like, no, 
I don't drink, I don't smoke, I just, I like to drive fast sometimes. Then Julian asks him, has she told you about her prior relationships? And Ruben's like, yeah, she told me about that. Julian's like, yep, she met herself a 24 year old and moved to Morocco to marry him. The guy was 24 years old. What? Yes. And I'm kind of sort of seeing the whole thing again. It's like it's playing a flashback. Yeah, and she still sends them money because she's got a good heart, you know, and I just want to make sure you're not going to try to take advantage of that. Giving money or sending money or anything because that, that has happened, you know, so. I don't I'm, need money from your mom, man. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I don't want to find, I just don't want no, that to happen. No, I don't, I didn't need any money from your mom. So Ruben, I believe, laid to rest the fears that Julian had. He appears to be a very stand-up guy, but hearing more details about Debbie and Osama really freaked him out. You know, that's quite a bit of an age difference. The other thing is I'm concerned because she still has a connection there. She's sending them money. I thought he knew all the details, but apparently not. He's especially unhappy that she's still keeping contact with him. Tune in next week and we'll watch Chantal get confused. Really confusing for things to fizzle out so quickly and abruptly. I just don't understand it. We'll see the fallout between Veronica and Jamal, and Megan pressures John into marriage. Wanting some kind of commitment as far as like a ring or something. I wouldn't want to make another rush decision. Ruben voices his concern about Debbie still being friends with her ex. Oh God, any ground I gained in the relationship, I feel like I've scored some bad points now. And Natalie reunites with Michael. Good, so? Tune in next week to see how it all goes. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching to the end. Everyone, please leave your comments. I want to know what you think about these couples. What do you think about my filtered head that now shows the color of my eyeballs and my lips? Hey. Da, 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 da. Ah. Hi! Pull up, pop up, then I'll the pop.